My name is Dr. Charles Yarish. I'm a professor in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at the University of Connecticut. Today will be an introduction to the algae to find out how we grow them. And this course is being brought to you by ATEC. It is the Algae Culture Extension Short Course, meant to give you an introduction into seaweed cultivation. Why grow sea vegetables? That is a very important question. Uh, well, there's a global market for sea vegetables, and it's a market that is actually increasing in North America. And when we look at the market for sea vegetables, the market is roughly between $5.9 to $7 billion when we look at this global market. Uh, the U.S. market has been estimated to be greater than $50 million. Uh, and we can expect this U.S. market will be growing as people are exposed to more and more seaweeds in their diets uh, because seaweeds are very healthy and nutritious. This is especially important for New England because we have many of the seaweed species that, uh, that are economically important and they are now being cultivated by a number of different farmers. Now, we also must understand uh, there is positive environmental benefits for growing seaweeds. As you're growing seaweeds in your coastal farm and then you harvest the seaweeds, those seaweeds, as they were growing, were taking up nutrients in your coastal waters. And when you harvest the seaweeds, you're taking out those nutrients. And so we look at the farming of seaweeds as an extractive form of aquaculture. Very, very important when we say extractive is extracting nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, which are sometimes in elevated amounts in coastal waters that if it's, they're not controlled, couldn't cause coastal eutrophication. So what do you do with seaweeds? Uh, seaweeds can be utilized for feeds, fertilizers, medicine, cosmetics, textiles, papers, uh, used in the leather industry. Uh, it's a major, they're major sources of uh, hydrocolloids or phycocolloids, including alginates, carrageenans, and augers. And of course, uh, food is the principal application, but some of the newer applications include the very ecosystem services that I just mentioned, and if you have a tremendous amount of biomass that is being produced very cheaply, you can convert the seaweed biomass into biofuels. So, what is the food value of seaweed? If we look at the protein content, the fat content, the ash content, the fiber content, it varies by the seaweeds. And it depends. If you're growing certain seaweeds there, uh, some of the red seaweeds have particularly high levels of protein. If we look at some of the brown seaweeds there, they're rich in fiber, and they're also very rich in carbohydrates. And you know, what, uh, why you're growing particular seaweeds depends on the application and the market uh, that you are working with. So here is an image of one of my favorite seaweeds. This is called uh, pyropia or porphyra. Uh, the uh, name in the food trade is called nori, and this is the wrapping, uh, this particular seaweed is the wrapping on your sushi. Uh, for instance, if we take a look at its content, uh, the, the tissue levels of protein can be up to 40 grams of protein per 100 grams of tissue. That's 40% protein. Some uh, species of the uh, nori can be as high as 50% protein. Nori is particularly high in vitamins A, B, uh, B complex 12, vitamin C, vitamin E, and other uh, elements that are very important. And this is just typical of seaweeds in general. They are highly nutritious. So, when we look at New England, we have an emerging industry. We have an emerging industry that was basically built upon 
uh, material that was wild harvested. And with wild harvesting, we have to be very, very careful because that impacts the environment. So there is a need for cultivating the very seaweed that the consumers want to have. And we have a company that was really instrumental in developing the uh, sea vegetable industry in all of New England. And this is Maine Coast Sea Vegetables from Franklin, Maine. And they have many different product lines, which is principally developed with wild harvested material. But it was really uh, the need to satisfy consumer demand that has led to uh, the cultivation of seaweeds of economic importance in New England. So, if we look at other uh, seaweeds, one seaweed that we'll learn more about in this uh, set of short courses will be the kelp. And one of the first companies that was involved in the cultivation of kelp is a company that comes from Portland, Maine. Uh, this is Ocean Approved. Uh, they develop uh, a commercial nursery for, in North America. They were the first company to do that. Uh, they worked on pre presenting or providing uh, many different products, uh, fresh material, uh, material that was fresh frozen and blanched material. Uh, they've done a wonderful job in marketing their products uh, in stores and they've also worked with uh, cooking schools to look at culinary applications. Other companies since that, uh, since uh, the Ocean Approved entry into the marketplace have developed throughout New England and there's roughly around 27 different farms that are producing uh, kelp and other seaweeds throughout the New England area that are going into food production. So there's a great deal of opportunities for uh, seaweed cultivation in the northeast part of the United States. An important question when we're dealing with the expansion of the seaweed cultivation in New England is how do we grow the different seaweeds? How can we grow these potential very important sea vegetables? Uh, we have to initiate laboratory cultures. We have to isolate what we call spores. We have to know something about the uh, biology of the each seaweed that we're working with. We have to know how to manipulate the production of spores so that they'll be able to settle on a substrate like string and then how to outplant of the, the seaweed uh, in the, uh, the field on what we call long lines or nets. And so uh, doing this and trying to figure out uh, how do we do this for our red seaweed, our brown seaweed, seaweed from New England will be absolutely essential. So inducing spores is something that requires a great deal of effort. Once we get these spores released, how do we then take these lines that uh, have the young uh, plants on them and move them out to the environment for outplanting, for the grow out. And then the issue is how to harvest. All these issues are all at the very basis of how to grow sea vegetables. And today we will then look at each of the different seaweeds of economic importance with you.